Hey guys, it's this time of year again. No, it's not Christmas, but it's nearly Halloween. And what do we want to do? We want to do a Halloween title template walkthrough. That's why you clicked on this video, I hope. So there we go. We're here in DaVinci Resolve on the Edit tab, and let's drag in a empty, if I can do this properly, empty Fusion Composition, Ctrl or Command D, and let's set the duration to 400 frames. And then we'll head over to the Fusion tab, do a file, import Fusion Composition, go to wherever you downloaded it, and open it up. So there we go. Um, before I go any further, let's save this project as Halloween Walkthrough through Copy. Well, that sounds good. Um, so the next thing I want to do, um, maybe to already show you how we will save it out later on, I'll use a saver rather than the media out, going back to the Edit tab and then to the, to the Deliver tab. With a heavy composition like that, it's typically a good idea to have a save and then you can save it out as a sequence of EXR files, right? Uh, so these are individual images and those you can import later on again. Now, the reason I do this is, um, well, twofold really. Uh, it's, it's, it's handy, but also if you do this all via the edit tab and back into the deliver tab, I noticed it can crash from time to time. So this I found to be uh, more stable. So there we go. So I'll give it a name, Halloween Render. Browse to a, direct, to a directory, sorry. Let's choose Render and there we go. Save this and later on, when we want to render, we go to Fusion, Render All Savers and Bob's your uncle. Now, how does this work? Um, so we've got a bunch of areas here. So we've got a main title, a subtitle, We've got a moon, right? And they all go into a merge and I'll show it here. And you don't see anything to start with apart from the moon, right? The reason you don't see the titles yet is because they're being built up um, in the beginning. And that's happening over here, animate main text. Uh, it's basically a fast no noise being piped into brightness, contrast, etc. So um, you can see this happening when I hit the play button, right? It's slowly coming up. Now, if you want to change the speed and this, that, and the other, you can do that by going, heading into the spline tab and then this parameter over here, the brightness, I animated. So you can change, change it to whatever you like. A similar thing is happening for the subtitle, right? I can display it here and that comes up a bit later on. There you go. All right. And displaying the merge tab again. So here we've got these three elements. Those three elements are going into one main renderer, which you can see over here. And that's still quite nippy, quite fast. Um, this renderer pipes into a volume fog. And here, first thing maybe to indicate here, if you want to change the color and such, you can do that over here, right? Change it, you can change the gain, the alpha and everything. I do a few more things to it. I add some glow to the moon. If I do this properly, oops, um, to the main title and to the subtitle, right? I do that separately. And by the way, I do that via or by restricting the glow uh, to an object ID. So I gave each of these an ID, right? So for the moon, Let's actually go right into it and show you. You can set the object ID here. In the text itself, I don't think there's a direct way to set it in the text 3D node, but there's an override 3D node where you can assign an object ID, like over here. Okay? So this all results in the sort of main render. Uh, and of course, if you want to change the text, then you do probably. So you just go into the text node. Ignore the color here because I'm replacing the whole material here via this material here and here you can change the color. But the very first thing, sorry, I forgot to say, uh, you probably need to change the font. You may not have this installed and then you'll get an error. So this is the very first thing you probably will need to do. Similarly, in the subtitle 
here, right? You can change the font and the size and everything you would want. Also, um, right now, this is a placeholder sort of image. It's just a bit of a fast noise. For better results, and that's what I used in the main render, you could uh, use uh, a free image of the moon, a sort of moon texture file, and there's a URL in here. So you could add a loader here, like this, go to wherever you downloaded it. I downloaded it here. And instead of the placeholder, I'm piping in this one in the merge. And then you see that looks a bit better. Okay. So um, we're here at now 140, frame 143. Let's set, to, set it to something like frame 180. And let's bring in the other elements then. And a uh, word of caution, it may take a bit to render. So what I typically do is set it to at around this frame because then a lot of the effects are already sort of developed. And uh, then just display it once. It means though that everything up, in that, up until that point will need to render out, right? Because of the fairly heavy particle system, especially the smoke particles here. And then once rendered out, you can tweak the individual elements. Uh, like the veins you see later on, you can tweak it, you can tweak the color and such. The only thing I would say what you would want to do up front before you do all that, um, first decide on the text, decide on the font and everything. Because when you change the text or the color here, the font, it will recalculate this whole particle system again. So whenever you do that, don't display these any of these final notes that involve the text. So if you just want to display the one over here, that's just fed by the main renderer, and that's fine. There's no particle system involved. But if you want to display this one here, this node, then you first will need to calculate all the smoke particles. So that's not a good idea. So first decide on your text, your font and everything. Do that by just displaying the text 3D or this main renderer or even the ones over here. That's fine but wait for these for later on, okay? So let's do it now though, I'm happy with this. So I'm going to display this. So by hitting um, number two on the keypad, and then I'll have to wait a bit, then start calculating through, and I will forward the video a bit because it can take a minute or two to do this. All right, so we're there. Now it's you know, it rendered everything out and you see the veins here, you see the smoke particles here. So that's it. So then you can do some tweaking right now here, right? This color corrector, you know, change the overall look and feel or not. Uh, if you want to change the smoke, right? So if you display it over here, actually, sorry, let's display this one and let's get rid of the checker underlay. And then for instance, say, okay, I want the smoke to be a bit more this or that or a different color, right? You can do it all over here. Okay, so that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, for the veins, right, you see them here. Uh, one of the things I did here was add a filter. You can disable that, Control P, that gives a bit more of a flat look. That may be what you're going for or not. So let's re-enable that. Um, there are a few more bits and bobs, but um, yeah, oh, sorry. Of course, the color corrector here as well. You can change the veins as well to something like a hideous green. Let's undo that. Um, what I would like to do though, is uh, to show you guys how easily, how easy it is to change this from this look to uh, more well, of a different look, right? So first of all, right, as I said before, Let's not m display this main one here, the main output, but let's go to this one here. All right, and we're back to this sort of basic output. Let's change the text to the text to something like new text. It will still take a tiny bit. Ah, sorry. And fatal mistake, I'm still showing the smoke here. So now, will calculate and you see that happening here throughout this and it will base the smoke off of the new text. We don't really want that right now because it makes everything so slow. So my bad. So instead of displaying this one here, 
right? And you can see it's nearly done rendering. Let's just uh, display the same one, right? This. So again, um, now it is much more nippy. So if we now change the font here to, well, whatever we like, Corpel. No, that's not very nice. Elephant. Let's do that and let's leave this title as is. Uh, and let's also change the color. So let's go into the blend here and make this something like a green. Right, like this. And let's also then change the fog to a greeny type fog. And let's do the same green actually. And that's a bit too much, so let's lower it again a bit. Maybe something like this. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, let's bring in the other elements and let's do the same thing as we did before. So we're now going to display one of the last nodes. Let's do this one here in viewport two. We'll take a bit again. So we'll fast forward this again. will be a minute or two. Right, so rendered and of course, this doesn't look very good because the other elements don't blend in. So let's go to the color corrector here for the smoke and turn the smoke into something greeny. And this, there we go, it's not quite enough. Something like this. Uh, and the reason why it takes a bit of a push here is I think I said the original elements here, I won't change it. Um, but the color, so recall, yeah, I set to a type of red, so you could change it to green, but it will recalculate. So let's leave that uh, for now. You can easily change it via the color corrector. All right, so that, that looks okay. By the way, if you want to have more smoke and, and things like that, go to the P emitter you see this little expression here, right? Uh, it basically means if the time is smaller than 30, so under a second or so, um, then don't generate any smoke particles. And after that, generate 2,800 per, uh, per frame. And that's quite a lot. A lot of them will be killed off later on anyways, but I won't go into the detail here. If you want the smoke to start later or earlier, you need to change the 30 here but also if you want to have more smoke change this to something like 5800 or whatever you like um also you can change the size of the smoke particles um but you know let's let's leave this as is for now and let's look at the veins here right because obviously they don't look very very good and also what i want to do here i want to make them glow so what do we need to do for that well first of all Let's go to the color corrector, right? So this we want to get more of a greeny color. Yeah, nice, but more of the same. So if we want to make this glow, one of the cool things you can do, he do here in the, sorry, in the branches, which is a, a P spawn node, you go to the style tab and the color is set to sort of a neutral gray. But if you pull the alpha down, you see something cool happening. There you go. How's that? And all of a sudden you've got these cool sort of electric type veins. And then you can even, if you'd want to, add a soft glow after this. Right, and then play around with the settings a bit. Maybe push the gain a bit. And there you go. Something really, really, well, I think is really, really cool. But I like electric type effects. And if you want, you can even disable the filter. Well, actually, that both looks pretty good. So now you see with a few relatively easy steps, you have got a very different look. And by the way, if you don't like these veins as such, and you know, you don't like the way that this one is coming out of here, what you can do is really in the P emitter, change the random seed. So if I change it here to something else, right? Then you've got veins that work a bit differently. There you go. This may be the one you'd like to have. So that's just, you know, sending, setting a diff different random seed. And I think this one, yeah, I'm quite happy with this. 
So and when, once you're done, basically render it out. Like I said, Fusion, render all savers. And then when, when you're done, you, well, save the project, right? And you, you can go back to it and then maybe start a new project or later on in the project, pull in the EXR sequence files and then render them out. And that's all there is to it. So yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. And if you've got any questions, let me know. Also, if you do something cool with this, you know, link to your video below.